Hello, welcome to Analog Output, and this time let's do a little thought experiment. Let's say we want to set up a synthesizer voice. And if you're not feeling very ambitious, you might just take an oscillator and put it into a voltage control filter and send that into a voltage control amplifier and control that with an envelope generator and call it a day. But maybe you're feeling a little more ambitious, a little more creative, and maybe you want to do something a little fancier. Like for instance, you might want to set up a voice using multiple oscillators. So instead of just one oscillator, maybe three oscillators, like three of the hero oscillators that we talked about in the last video. And let me make it clear, I'm not talking about polyphony here or three-part harmony. I'm talking about three oscillators being used to create one voice. So for instance, you might have a couple of oscillators that are slightly detuned from each other, which uh, some of those will give you a somewhat more rich, little fatter kind of a sound than a single oscillator. Or maybe you'd have an oscillator that's tuned an octave below another oscillator, so you get kind of a, a sub-oscillator effect, but without the waveform limitations of a sub-oscillator. Or maybe you want to have them tuned at some other interval, like a third or a fifth or something like that. Uh, in any case, you might have several oscillators set up with some pitch offset between them. And then from there on, what you want them all to do is to follow the same input control voltages. So, for instance, we want them all to track the same keyboard or sequencer control voltage. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a multiples module and we're going to have to stick the keyboard control voltage into one of the multiples and take three copies of that control voltage and send those three copies to the volt per octave inputs on the three oscillators. Now maybe we've also got, I don't know, a pitch wheel for instance. Well, okay, that's another pitch control voltage that's going to go into another multiples channel. We're going to take three copies of that, send those to each of the three oscillators. And okay, maybe the first two oscillators are, we're going to use the pulse output and we want to modulate the pulse width with a low frequency oscillator for instance. Okay, so we put the low frequency oscillator into yet another multiple. We take two copies of that and send those to the two oscillators and okay we can keep going like this there's other stuff we could do but maybe we're going to say okay this is good enough so what have we got here well we've got something that takes up 35 centimeters width in your case and we got something that's going to use up 11 of your patch cables and that's just for the inputs and we've got a pain in the butt really to set this up and get it working and to maintain it. Is there an easier way to do this? Well, there is. If you had a Moog modular, maybe you're living in the 1970s, maybe you shelled out $50,000 a couple years ago for a reissue. Anyway, you've got a Moog modular, you've got the Moog 921 oscillator big full featured oscillator you could use three of those or you could use three of the Moog 921B oscillator and this is an oscillator that's half the width of the 921 and it's half the width because it doesn't have as much on the front panel it's got the same outputs it doesn't have as many inputs it doesn't have as many controls and that makes it less flexible uh, less easy to use on its own, but the whole idea with the 921B is you don't use it on its own. Instead, you use it in conjunction with the very imaginatively named 921A. And the 921A is not an oscillator, it is an oscillator driver. And it has 
more inputs on the front panel. It's got more controls. And all this 921A does is it takes the pitch control voltages that you put in and it takes the pitches that you set up on the tuning knob and combines them together into a single pitch control voltage and it takes the pulse width control voltages that you put in and it takes what you set up on the pulse width knob on the front panel and it adds those up to get a single pulse width control voltage and then it sends those two control voltages out behind the front panel to the 921B oscillator or to several 921B oscillators. So they're all getting the same pitch and same pulse width control voltages, which is what you want for setting up a multi-oscillator voice. And that's easier and takes up less space in your case. And I thought this was a pretty good idea. I thought I'd like to implement something like that myself. So I designed another VCO, which surprise, surprise, it's called the Sidekick VCO. And the Sidekick VCO is half the width of the Hero VCO. It's half the width because it doesn't have as much on the front panel. It's got the same outputs, has fewer inputs, has fewer knobs. It's less flexible to use on its own, but it's not designed to be used on its own. It's designed to be used with, well, not with an oscillator driver module. Instead, it's designed to be used with the Hero VCO. The idea is you put the control voltages into the Hero, you set up a initial pitch and pulse width on the Hero controls, and the Hero adds up those pitch and pulse width control voltages and sends them behind the front panel to one or more sidekick VCOs. How many more than one? Well, the signals are buffered on both sides, and in principle, you should be able to add, I don't know, several. I would think you could do three or four or five, uh, maybe even more. I don't know. I've only ever made two sidekicks, and it works with two. So, for our three oscillator voice, we would just need one Hero VCO, two sidekick VCOs, it would be 20 centimeters wide instead of 35. And instead of 11 patch cables, it would use three. Now, in addition, the Hero VCO also takes its linear FM signal and sends that out to the sidekick modules. And it takes its own ramp wave output and sends that to the sidekick modules so they can sync to that. So let's take a closer look here. The sidekick VCO We've got the same four waveform outputs as on the Hero. We've got one volt per octave control voltage input. We've got one pulse width modulation control voltage input. We've got one linear FM input. None of these have attenuators. We do have a fine tuning control knob and an octave switch. It's only a five position octave switch instead of 11. And you notice they're labeled fine offset and octave offset. Just to remind you that normally what these are doing is just adding some offset to the main control voltage that's coming from the Hero. We've got a sync switch that lets you choose hard sync or soft sync or no sync. Uh, there's no sync input on the front panel. The only thing you can sync to is the Hero. And we've got the same four trimmer potentiometers accessible from the front panel for the tracking and central frequency and maximum pulse width. So there's not as much on the front panel, but it does get the pitch and pulse width and linear FM and the ramp waveform for syncing behind the front panel on this 8-pin box header here, which connects via a ribbon cable to the output link header on the Hero. And you can daisy chain these things so you can connect multiple sidekicks from the Hero. And you notice that the physical layout of these things is quite different in order to get the oscillator to fit behind a 50 millimeter wide front panel. I made the circuit board perpendicular to the front panel instead of the parallel 
PCB sandwich that I used on the Hero. However, aside from the fact that there's fewer inputs and controls, and aside from the fact that it's got an input link header instead of an output link header, the Sidekick circuit is identical to the Hero circuit, so they will work in the same way. All right, so that's how it's set up, and let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so we've got the Sidekick oscillator here. You've got a control voltage coming in from the keyboard. You've got the output going to the oscilloscope. You can see it oscillates, and you can see that if I change the octave switch... That's working, and we've got fine-tuning here. That's all okay. We've got, uh, we've got our four outputs. We've got a linear FM pulse width modulation in there. That all works. I won't bother you with that. But let's take a look at what happens if we bring in the hero. Okay, now we've got our hero and sidekick. Now we've got our control voltage going into the hero, and the sidekick is connected to the hero via the ribbon cable. You can see that they're real comparable uh, frequencies, but they're certainly not the same frequency. They're not locked together or anything like that. But if I change that, it changes the frequencies on both oscillators. Here's our fine tuning. That works just fine. If I take a look at square waves, pulse waves, okay, and then if I change the pulse width, it changes the pulse width on both oscillators. All right, what happens if we do linear FM? Good question. I've got a linear FM here. Okay, you can see them both wiggling back and forth here. Let me try going to a single shot here. Okay, well, you can see what's happening. we got lower frequency here, higher frequency here. This is frequency modulation, and you can see, again, lower frequency here, higher frequency there. They're both responding in similar ways to the linear FM input. So all of that is good. All right, take the linear FM out of here. I want to look at sync. So oh, that's do yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So these are kind of similar frequencies, but they're not the same. They're not locked together. If I switch this to soft sync, and yeah mess with the frequencies until they're close enough, then they lock together. So you've got the same waveform here. It doesn't change the waveform, and it's locked in frequency to the other one. Okay, if I switch to hard sync, then again they're locked together, but if I change the control voltage, you can see the the usual hard sync thing where you get changes in the waveform. So there you are. That's the sidekick VCO being controlled by the hero. Okay, we have here the hero VCO and two side kicks. The Hero's got a keyboard sequencer control voltage on the voltage per octave input. There's also a 
pulse width input, which is turned down at the moment. The sidekicks are connected inputs nothing from, from nothing but the hero. And then the outputs are going over to these three channels here. The sidekicks are tuned close to, slightly detuned from the hero. We bring up the hero. Got that. And then hero plus one sidekick. plus the other sidekick. These are all pulse waves. And all three of them together. So we just adjust the tuning a little bit here. Okay. And start the sequencer. Bring up pulse width modulation. All three of those are being pulse width modified. I can drop this one by an octave. Okay, this one, how about we bring this up like a fifth or fourth or something? And there you go, that's the Sidekick VCO. And I hope you enjoyed that. If you're interested in building heroes and sidekicks, there's a link below to the GitHub repository where you'll find the schematics and the circuit board layouts and Gerber files and all of that. Uh, at the time I record this, there's a few circuit board and front panel sets available on my Tindy store. There's a link in the description below there if they haven't yet sold out. And uh, take a look at them. Have some fun with them. Let me know how it works out for you. And like, subscribe, and tune in. I'll see you again soon on Analog Output.